Why do zebras have stripes? Could it be camouflage? Well, does the Africans want to look like black and white stripes? No, it doesn't. So what's going on? And what does any of this have to do with peer pressure? If the stripes are not for camouflage, what are they for? Many solutions have been suggested, but I want to talk about my favorite today. And it starts with a story. Biologists have been studying the behavior of zebras in Africa for a while. And the way you do that is you sit in a cheap and you look through binoculars and you record the behavior of either the group or a single individual. And whenever they looked at a single individual and then they started writing down whatever they have just observed, they looked back up through the binoculars and they lost the individual. They couldn't find it anymore in the group of zebras. So what they did, being smart biologists, is they went up with the jeep and had a little bucket of red paint and just brushed the flank of one of the zebras they want to observe so they can see it through the, through the binoculars. The next day, they come back, want to keep recording the behavior, and that zebra was dead. The lions got it. So the biologists tried it again, put some clips on the ears or different colors on the flank, and that kept happening. That zebra was one of the first ones to get killed by the lions. So what they found out was the camouflage wasn't against the environment. The camouflage was against the herd. You see, zebras are camouflaged after all, but not against the environment or the savanna. They're camouflaged against the herd. Sticking your neck out as a zebra is dangerous and could be the difference between life and death. As a zebra, you don't want to be special or different. You want to be blending in just fine. And us humans, we basically want the same thing. In the 1950s, after the atrocities of the Second World War, psychologists began to study how humans behave in groups. And there are many famous experiments done back then, and we could talk about them for hours. But I think more interesting and more informative is this clip from Candid Camera. The gentleman in the elevator now is a candid star. These folks who are entering, the man with a white shirt, the lady with a trench coat, and subsequently one other member of our staff will face the rear. And you'll see how this man in the trench coat <laughs> tries to maintain his individuality, but little by little, he looks at his watch, but he's really making an excuse for turning just a little bit more. Now, here's a fella with his hat on in the elevator. First he makes a full turn to the rear and Charlie closes the door. A moment later, we'll open the door. Everybody's changed positions. <laughs> These people wanted to be like everybody else. They wanted to blend in in the elevator. Something in their brains made them feel uncomfortable, some urge for them to adhere to the group, to be the same, to not stick out. We do this constantly. We see it in how we dress, what we eat, what language we speak, but more importantly, how and what we think. I'm not saying conformity is a bad thing, not at all. Most of the time, conformity gives us safety and more importantly, a sense of belonging and identity. That's why it hurts and it's painful to be excluded. If you never consciously experienced the urge to conform, give it a try next time you're in an elevator or in a big crowd of people. Just turn the opposite way of everybody else and see how you feel. Sometimes it's good to remind ourselves of this inner urge to conform, to stay within the herd, to blend in and be safe.